Hi, my name is Thanat Gurutat. Um, I'm going to present learnable, um, learning planable representations with Causal InfoGAN. This is joint work with Aviv Tama, Ga Yang, Stuart Russell, and Peter Abu. So we dream that one day our robots will be able to operate inside our homes, facilitate doctors and nurses in hospitals, and in general, work alongside humans. Many of these, ta these tasks are very challenging, and they need robots to be able to reason about and manipulate objects. So um, how can we solve complex manipulation problems? So I will first start by um, let you imagine this piece of rope, and imagine you want to turn it into this configuration in the right. And even with more complicated configurations, like the, the, this knot or this knot, um, as humans, we can have a pretty good idea of how to get there by imagine this manipulation sequence inside our head. So the key idea is that as humans, we can imagine long-term man object manipulation and use it for planning. So if we consider current approaches to tackle this problem, what are they? First, let's look at classical planning. In classical planning, you have this ability to do long, long horizon reasoning and do complicated planning. However, there's a gap between connecting the, the perception to this representation. And so in general, you would need to specify the predicates, the effects of your actions. Model-free reinforcement learning, on the other hand, can handle complex inputs such as images. It is difficult to use because it requires a lot of data. And it, you also need to specify the reward function on, the, on images, which is very challenging. And finally, if you train this model-free reinforcement learning on one task, and you want the robot to tie a different knot, you would need to relearn from scratch every time. Model-based reinforcement learning, however, um, can provide a way of reusing this knowledge from previous tasks. However, current results in visual predictive control um, are limited to simple planning, simple manipulation, and required engineered shape reward. So in this talk, we, we want to find a solution that can solve long horizon problem, can plan in high dimensional space, and can represent the system knowledge in a way that it can be reused to solve new tasks in zero shot. So let's first try to formulate this problem, and we'll see how can we solve it. Here, we have this data of a robot randomly perturbing the rope. As you can see, it's important to note that the, the robot um, is, ha, has no goal in mind, and this data capture causality of the system, which means it, it tells you what the robot can and cannot do to this rope. Now, in this work, we, we, we don't worry about how we, um, how we get this data, but we, we assume that our data capture interesting configurations of our system. So our goal here is to imagine a goal-directed sequence of images from a start image to the goal image in a plausible way. By plausible here, we mean that the, um, the transitions respect the causality in the system. So if we, can, if we can do this, then we break down these long horizon problems into sub problems, which we can later solve using an inverse or a local model. 
So how can we solve this? We have seen some recent advancement in generative models, such as GAN, that can convincingly transform an image from the left to the image to the right. So let's try to follow this idea and, and think of this linear interpolation as some kind of planning. So let's get a brief review of GAN. So a generator is a neural network that takes some random noise and generate an observation. This, this is a two-player game between the discriminator and the generator. The goal of the generator is trying to generate as realistic image as possible, whereas the discriminator is trying to distinguish fake images from real images. So let's, let, we, we train this model um, of GAN, and then we apply it to our problem, and we do interpolation in the latent space. So here is what happened. Let's see if you can spot some problems with this plan. So the, the red crosses here show the transitions that are not feasible with respect to what we have seen in the data. Can we, can we do something better by inc incorporating some meaning into this latent space? In particular, we will break down our noise vector into two parts. The, the random noise be, where we had before and the state, where the state will be encouraged to capture the semantic in the, in the observation by, through the mutual information. So adding this mutual information term to the loss and Chen et al. have shown that if we, can, if we interpolate one of the dimensions in the state, you can get interpolation in the size of the shares. So if we apply this InfoGAN idea, um, you can see that it works a bit smoother, but there's still some transition that are not res uh, reflected in the data. Now, here is our main idea of the talk. We, here we propose causal InfoGAN, where we, we, want, we want the transition. So first, we, we, we sample the next state um, in the latent space from a learned transition model, T. And then we use them to generate a pair of observations. So if we train this model, we'll, we'll get the latent transition that has high mutual information with the transitions in the observation space, which means it explains the behavior we have in the data. So we can, we can design the transition to be whatever function we want. And in this case, we'll look at a local Gaussian transition in the function of state. So, so having a load variance in this transition would mean that small transition in the latent space would generate a pair of observations that are highly probable in the data. If we, if, if we do something like linear interpolation in the latent space and should choose small enough step size, you would be able to generate a very feasible plan. So um, we combine, uh, so we, we evaluate this numerically by training a, a classifier that evaluate a possibility score between each two images and average over the trajectories. And we can see that causal InfoGAN can outperform InfoGAN and get just DC GAN significantly. So if we look at these results, you can see that it can generate very interesting configurations such as an L shape or an S shape or even a loop. Now, let's take a look at the state space again. We have seen that we can cluster 
um, we, we can learn the continuous representation in the latent space before in the rope example. Now we ask, can we do something even more general? So if you think about a transition model, um, we can, we can, if you pick anything that is, as long as it's back probable, and we can use it for planning. We, can, we in fact, can, can use any transition model and design the state space as we want. So this is a very interesting example that we look at this binary state space because you can think of this each uh, dimension in the state as, as a predicate that we are trying to learn from the images. And in this uh, binary state space, we, we use a stochastic neural network transition and Gumball softmax for, for it to back probable. Now, in this binary state space example, let's look at this 2D domain where the, the top two rooms are separated from the bottom two by a thin wall. The data is again randomly uh, perturbing the agent, it's just a random particle moving. And the goal here is to plan to go around the obstacle. It is very difficult here to do planning because Euclidean metric is not useful. As you can see, two points that are very close across the wall are infinitely far away in, in the temporal structure we, from the data. So one way to do planning here is by clustering. If we can cluster the states, then we can do planning in this, this discrete space. You can think of it as a graph with some connections and find a plan. So if we apply k-means, you would end up clustering point uh, observations that are across the wall. Whereas if you use causal info again, you can think of it as a mapping from, it also learns a mapping from the observation to the discrete state. And this is kind of like a clustering algorithm. So you can learn a smooth and well-separated boundary between the top clusters and the bottom clusters. So again, with this um, clustering, you can encode the observations into the states. Now, we use this start and the go state to, to, uh, with graph search to find a plan in the latent space. Then finally, we, we can decode this sequence of states into this observation space through this generator that we have learned and use the GAN discriminator to help selecting the base trajectory. Now, let's, if, we, if we apply this, uh, we, we can compare, compare the planning in the k-means and the cost of info GAN, and we find that cost of info GAN can successfully plan trajectories through the tunnel and return none when it, it tries to plan across the wall with very high success rate. So if we revisit the, ro the rope example, um, there were a slight modifications. In, in the state decoder, we searched for the best uh, state, uh, state rather than using the classifier. And the planning there was we used linear interpolation or A star planning. And finally, in the trajectory decoder, we find that training a separate classifier can, can perform better than using GAN discriminator. So to summarize, we've proposed these causal info GANs that are deep generative models that can explain causality in the data. This is a general framework for structuring the latent space so that it is easy to plan with. The plans are visually interpretable, and it, this is an attempt to bridge the gap between classical planning and representation learning. So this is an even more exciting result very recently. Um, so we, before we had the start and the go configurations, and we can generate a plan. Now, we take this to the real robot and learn an inverse model to follow the trajectories. 
So let's see the video here. Um, so here, you see the robot is thinking on the right. And you can see that um, the, on the top left is what the robot see. And in the middle is how the robot is executing the plan. Um, this is a very pre preliminary result. We, we have about 20% success rate, and we are trying to improve the results. However, we think this is very impressive because you can, it can turn self-supervised random exploration to do goal-directed planning and execute it on real robot. We believe that this is a very promising approach toward planning and executing complex object manipulation. Thank you. We're a little bit behind, maybe uh, one quick question. Or... Questions about that? Well, then we'll, we'll thank our speaker very much again.